Hello there and welcome to VGC. My name is Chris Scullion and this is your guide to all 24 games that will be released as part of Season 1 for the Playdate. Now for those not aware, the Playdate is an upcoming handheld with a little crank on the side um, and one of its main gimmicks is that it's got a season full of 24 games and on a specific day every week uh, you'll get two new games added to your library. Um, as part of the cost of the play date, so over the course of 12 weeks you'll eventually get all 24 games. Now obviously one of the, 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 the whole points of this is that you're meant to get a nice little surprise once a week to get two new games, so if you've already got a play date pre-ordered you might not want to watch this video, um, or you might just want to see what you've got in store. Um, otherwise if, if you are just curious to see what games are coming to it, or if you've got one on the way and you'll probably forget this video in time um, and you're happy to see what's coming then let's get stuck in. This video also presents the games in the order that they will arrive on your play date. Uh, so if you've maybe further down the line you've got a play date and you want to see what's coming up next week this video will reveal that for you though obviously that will be a spoiler. So one of the first two games you'll get with your play date is Whitewater Wipeout which is a kind of surfing game where you use the crank to rotate your surfer as he, as he kind of goes. It's similar to the old kind of California games surfing game, if you remember that, probably not because I'm an extremely old man. But um, yeah, the whole point is that you, you crank to turn and as you reach the top of the wave you, you can spin uh, by turning the crank. This one takes a little while to get used to um, because you have to kind of spin and land back in the water at a certain angle um, and if you're going to try over the top spins uh, it can be quite difficult to time it right to get the angle back in but once you get the hang of it it can be quite good fun especially when you're putting together combos uh, to land in the waves. Um, so yeah it's a decent little start. It's, it's, it's a bit, uh, there's not a lot to it, it's more of a kind of mini game type thing but it's a nice wee start. That's also accompanied by Casual Murder, which has got a bit more kind of a, a, a bit more to it um, in terms of the first game on the play date. Um, this is a kind of RPG type thing where you are a little chap with a camera who's trying to take photos of lots of birds that are that are in the environment, and you talk to various people and then take photos. When when you bring up the f uh, the camera, you turn the crank to focus basically, and you have to collect a bunch of different birds. Um, and put them in a photo book. Um, it's quite good fun, uh, some of the birds are quite frustrating to catch but I suppose that's the whole point of it. Um, but yeah, a nice little uh, way around and off the first week and of the two games on week one this is probably the one that you'll spend the most time on um, I would imagine because there's, there's a bit more story to it, a bit more to it. The following week you'll get Time Travel Adventure this is a kind of weird puzzle type game where you use the crank to forward and reverse time. Uh, the story goes that this guy basically has to meet his date every uh, day and he's late every time so you have to get him to um, his girlfriend as quickly as possible. But along the way he's, he's smelling flowers, he's jumping in hurdles, he's hanging on bars while other objects like butterflies and uh, animals and stuff are, are kind of trying to get in his way and if they hit him um, you need to go back to the start again. So it's all about kind of reversing time to avoid them um, and making sure you don't get hit on the way to the girlfriend. It actually gets quite tricky quite early as you kind of get stumped on some of these things and try and figure out how to get past them but it's a nice little gimmick and a good way of using the crank. Also accompanying that is Boogie Loops which is a kind of music sequencing thing. Now this one doesn't come with instructions that I could see um, and it was quite tricky to figure out what to do in this one. It's quite um, it seems quite, I say detailed, but it's more just that the, um, the quite a full, a, quite a busy menu, um, and and it can be quite overwhelming at first to try and figure out what's going on. As far as I can tell, the crank doesn't do much with this one. I need to spend a bit longer with it. Um, but this is more just kind of uh, making your own little tunes and and sequencing them together. It's fun enough, um, but I kind of got bored of this one quite quickly. The following week your first game is Hyper Meteor which is a kind of asteroids like clone except you don't have any bullets, instead your ship basically acts as the bullet and you turn the crank to rotate um, in wh whatever direction you want to aim and then you press up on the d-pad to boost forward. Um, the, the gimmick here is that the enemies and asteroids and such come in black and white colours um, and if you fly into the white sections they are destroyed but if you fly into the black sections you you are destroyed basically. So the idea is not to just fly into the uh, asteroids but to actually time 
your approach to them so that you hit the white bits instead of the black bits. It's quite good fun. Also out that week, uh, along with Hyper Meteor, is Zipper, which is a kind of turn-based um, feudal like samurai type game uh, where the aim is to you, you you can run in straight lines basically and he zips forward um, in straight lines and the idea is to zip past enemies and as you if you pass one um, he'll basically slice through them with his sword as he goes past them um, but obviously the enemies move with each turn as well so the aim is to zip to a certain distance and then you can use the crank to preview what will happen um, if you stop there so it's a case of trying to find a safe place to stand um, without getting attacked when you when you stop. Um, it's fun, it, it takes a little while to get into it but um, it's quite cool. The following week the first game is Flipper Lifter um, which I had quite a fun time with as well. Um, it's basically set in a hotel where you've got to um, operate a lift by turning the crank up and down and the lift picks up these penguins and then you've got to uh, take them to whatever floor they want to go to um, As you, there's a timer constantly going down and as you uh, deliver the penguins to their destination the timer pop goes up a little bit again um, and you can build combinations by collecting multiple penguins but obviously they, they, they get quite impatient eventually and if you don't deliver them to the floor quick enough um, chaos ensues as they say. Um, this is a fun little one and it used the crank quite well. Um, it pretty much only uses the crank. Um, so this is a fun little mini game and it is a mini game. It's a kind of game and watch style um, thing. Um, although with obviously much better animation. Um, but it was fun that this, this passed more time than, than, than you would think by looking at it. I enjoyed this one. It is also accompanied in the same week by Echoic Memory where it's kind of weird plot where you're working in some sort of lab where you're uh, testing these audio devices and the gimmick is that it plays a bit of music uh, whether it's dubstep music or hip-hop music or something um, and then you have to play it back on these multiple kind of uh, playback machines and you've got to find the matching music and the twist is that sometimes the music is distorted and you've got to turn the crank to uh, kind of undistort the music so you can match it up better so yeah this one obviously needs the speakers or headphones to use it properly um, so if you're kind of hard to hear and this one's not really playable but if, if you're able to, to, to hear it um, it's cool, it's, it's a nice little kind of matching game, there's not a lot to it but the gimmick's fun and it's nothing I've kind of played before so it's, it's pretty cool. Week 5 starts with Lost Your Marbles which is a weird kind of puzzle type thing where uh, your character has a weird kind of machine that uh, makes decisions for them so that they'll be asked to kind of decide something and you then turn the crank to tilt the um, this marble and try and make it smash off different light bulbs to, to choose uh, what decision they want to make. This one was a bit awkward, they, 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 it's the only one of the games that were included where I kind of struggled a bit with the crank controls because you can just turn the crank all the way around, you can only really turn it halfway. Um, if you turn it anymore the uh, level the level doesn't tilt 360 degrees basically so it gets a bit confused if you try and tilt it more than 180. Um, so this one was fine enough but it was a bit of a struggle and it would be a bit frustrating at times but it's, it's a nice little kind of quirky thing. There's a lot of text to get through as well at first um, so this might be um, your mileage may vary with this one. It's also accompanied by Pick Pack Pup where you're a dog who works for a, a baggage service and this one doesn't really use the crank much uh, from what I could tell. Um, it's more of a kind of match three puzzle game where you're matching different pieces of luggage and you've got to shuffle them around to get three of them together and that puts them in a big uh, package and then when you've got enough packages together you tap them to send them off and the more packages you've got on screen the more points you get. It's fun, it's pretty harmless, there's not a lot to it but yeah it's, it's decent enough. The following week the first game is Demon Quest 85 where you have to try and summon demons by uh, recruiting different people from your high school yearbook um, and then trying to gather things that you think the demon would like, playing a specific type of music, um, getting a specific type of snack for it. Um, it's quite fun, it's a bit trial and error -y. There, there's, there's times when uh, you've got this book that tells you what, the, what each demon likes and there are situations where I thought I had what you would need to resurrect a certain demon but they just wouldn't appear which is quite frustrating so it's, it's quite vague in terms of what is required 
um, which is a bit annoying, but um, it's fun enough. It's got a nice little kind of um, style to it, and, a, and a, I like how kind of quirky it is. This is an interesting one. It's joined by Omaze, which is a it's a cool little puzzle game. It's a kind of reaction based puzzle game where uh, you've got to guide a ball. Uh, from one from from the start to the exit in each level, and you at times you twist the crank to rotate certain uh, certain balls that are, uh, appears and you you basically uh, press a button to uh, s- switch it over from from ball to ball, and as you rotate the crank and some of them uh, some of them they rotate automatically. So there's there's a bit of reaction based stuff there, and there's a bit of kind of thinking ahead to see how to accurately move the ball to, to the exit it, it, it's, it's a fun one it, it takes a wee while getting used to but once you do it's it's quite addictive the following week opens with executive golf dx which will be divisive i think once you get the hang of it it's actually really good fun it's, it's basically a golf game like a mini golf thing but the instead of a golf course it's a corporate tower uh, so you get nine holes going up the tower and then nine holes going back down the tower and each uh, hole is basically a, an office in, in the tower block um, so you're basically hitting the ball over desks and off pipes and stuff like that um, and once you get going it, it, it's quite cool but there are situations where the ball lands in really awkward places and it can be quite frustrating trying to get it out but it's one of those games where over time you'll learn how uh, far the ball goes with, with different power levels and stuff and you'll eventually get quite good at it. It's a fun idea and it's quite quirky but you, you're prepared to be annoyed with it for an hour or so until you until it kind of clicks. Um, and in the same week as that is Questy Chess which is a kind of chess RPG. You, you, you've got to make your way through a bunch of different stages um, as a chess piece um, and kind of following the rules of that chess piece so you, if you're a pawn, the pawn starts by moving two squares and can only move one square at a time but can also move diagonally uh, to attack and over time you will uh, find uh, power-ups and, and, and trigger certain little uh, squares and switches that can eventually use the, the crank you can use the crank at one point to uh, shuffle some tiles around and stuff like that it's quite cool, it's a nice little gimmick um, it's got a cool little old school uh, 486 PC style uh, art style with kind of lots of whirring and clunking in the background which is quite cool um, I like this one this is it's a slow burner but it's, it's quite quite interesting the following week starts with Star Sled uh, which is similar in, in a way to uh, Hyper Meteor which was released earlier um, where you turn the crank to turn a ship the kind of the, the, the asteroids one but instead of slamming into asteroids this time you're drawing rings around these stars to, to capture them um, and it starts kind of easy enough. You just you, you rotate the crank to to turn the ship, but then it starts adding like enemy ships and, and other obstacles, and that makes it harder because you can't just freely turn as you like. You've got to properly, intricately navigate in between little gaps. This is quite a cool one. It'll keep you going for a wee while, but um, yeah, it's it's got a difficulty curve, so you need to uh, be patient with this one. Also released the same week as Saturday Edition, which is a, a strange one. It's like a, almost like a point-and-click RPG, but without pointing and clicking. You're this guy who it, it started kind of dreams about trying to get into heaven, but not quite getting in. Um, and there's a weird kind of story at the start about how he claims that he was abducted by aliens and stuff like that. Um, I don't want to spoil much more of what what happens later, but it's an interesting little game where you you, you walk around and as he walks past points of interest, they appear in a little. Uh, window at the top of the screen so you can see when things can be interacted with when you stand in front of them. This is an interesting game, it's, it's, it's well written, uh, the, di- the dialogue in it is quite interesting, that will kind of hook, keep your attention. Um, it's very slow paced so some people might not like it, there's a lot of loading in it. When you go from screen to screen you often have to pause and wait for loading, so the pace of this one is probably the sp- slowest of most of the games um, featured in season one, but if you've got kind of patience for uh, this sort of thing, it, it's actually quite interesting. Week 9 starts with Snack. It might be pronounced Snake because it's about a snake and it might just be humorous internet spelling. Uh, but basically it's Snack slash Snake and it is a modern take on Snake um, in which you run, run around trying to eat apples but the gimmick here is that the apples can sometimes eat you. The apples have got mouths too and they can eat your snake and will kind of chew their way along your body as you move. So the, the way to get rid of them is before they reach your head you have to turn around on yourself and eat the apples that are on your body. Um, and to do this you've got a jump move now so you can 
can jump over your own body and eat the apples on the way over. Um, so it's weird. It's like snake, but like a, a, a kind of slightly easier, but also trickier in, the, in, in a different sense way of snake, of playing snake, in that you can jump over yourself, so you're less likely to hit yourself, but you've got this added pressure of trying to eat the apples before they eat you too. Um, it's cool. It's good fun. It's about as fun as snake used to be back in the old nokia phone days so um it'll hold your attention for about as long as that did and in the same week is sasquatchers which is a kind of fake reality show about guys who um a, a group of pals who want to uh find mythical creatures like the sasquatch or nessie or what have you and it's a kind of it's a turn-based uh, strategy game similar to stuff like Advance Wars. They, there's even like an Advance Wars reference near in the intro, which is quite funny. And they've got to find you, 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 you move, and then the Yeti or whatever it is in that stage moves. And the aim is to get close enough to them that you can then get your camera out and take a photo of them. And you're then graded, uh, graded depending on how uh, good the photo is or or, or what have you. Um, it's interesting. It, 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 there's this is all down to personal taste I think it tries a bit too hard to be funny um, a lot of the jokes kind of fall flat and at times you're just like come on get on with it it, it, it tries a bit too hard uh, but some people will like it some people will be in its sense of humour it, 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 it kind of fell flat, a bit flat for me uh, but others will, will, will fall in love with it so um, don't take that um, as gospel but it, it just didn't click with me but the, the gameplay is an interesting idea at least the following week opens with Inventory Hero, um, which I've liked a lot more than I should on paper because on paper it doesn't there's not a lot to it. Um, it's a kind of RPG uh, grinding simulator where your guy just runs from or girl you can you can, you can choose which uh, a male or a female character um, just constantly runs and approaches new enemies and they take turns attacking each other and they just constantly collect things that gets added to their inventory and, and your sole job is to control the inventory basically dumping objects when you don't think they need them uh, applying switching out weapons eating uh, food and drinking potions and um, equipping armor as and when you see fit and it gets quite frantic because there are times when they just pick up a load of trash and you need to try and sift out the trash compare weapons to see uh, if a new one you've picked up is better than the existing one sometimes their armor will fall off and you've got to hope you've got stuff in reserve um, it's, 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 it's quite good fun even though there's not actually Actually a lot to it. I, I played this one for quite a long time. And joining Inventory Hero in the same week is Spell Corked. It's a kind of delivery game in which you play as a, a, a witch who is making potions. Uh, uh, it's it's kind of del- they're, they're like an Etsy service only they're making potions. So people email in saying, "Oh, I want this kind of potion, that kind of potion," and you gather ingredients, you order in ingredients, and use them to uh, make uh, specific potions. Um, and it starts off quite basic, you're making like coffee for people but then eventually you're, it gets all quite mystical and you use the uh, combination of the, the, the controls and the crank to, to make them in different ways like grinding a mortar and pestle and uh, stirring potions and stuff like that. It's fine, it's another quite slow burner, a lot of these games are quite heavy on the plot um, and so that a lot of them kind of take a little while to get them and this one is quite one of, is one of the kind of slower paced ones um, so it takes you a wee while before you're, you're, you're properly into it but it's fun enough, it, once once it gets going and you, you've gathered enough uh, a, a nice range of ingredients it, it, it starts to get quite interesting uh, so it's, it's decent, it's not bad uh, the penultimate week gives you Battleship Godios which is a kind of side scrolling um, shoot em up but the twist is that your bullet has to return to you. You you don't have an infinite uh, number of bullets, and also the bullet fires at a forty-five degree angle. So the aim is to kind of position yourself uh, at an angle from your enemies, fire your bullet, hit them, and then collect the bullet when it comes back. Um, which is quite tricky. It takes to quite a while to get used to. It's almost like a cross between a first uh, side scroll and shoot 'em up, and like a breakout Arkanoid type thing. And when you take a hit. Uh, you've got three lives as usual but when you get hit you use the crank to rewind back to where you want to kind of retry from which is quite cool this one takes a while like you used to the, 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 but once you once it clicks um, it's, it's actually quite cool um, I quite like this one it's a clever idea and it's nice how it kind of mixes a bunch of different genres together to get a, a nice little shoot em up going and also with Battleship Gorios comes Up in Smoke uh, where you play as a little kind of 
uh, fire ranger, park ranger guy. Um, there's there's a fire in his park basically, and it's chasing after him, and he has to make his way to the end of each stage, uh, rescuing stranded kids along the way, and uh, using his axe to cut down trees to get past and stuff like that, and using it to bounce off of almost like a kind of shovel knight, uh, ducktails type pogo stick thing. It's, and it's interesting this is the only platformer of, of all the kind of games in season one so platformer fans um, have to wait uh, 11 weeks before they, they finally get their fix um, but Up and Smoke's a fun one it, it, it seems to give, kind of give you random levels every time you play but it, it, it's weird because even when you kind of complete a level it, it can sometimes turn up again as part of the rotation um, so the more you play it the more repetitive it can get but it's fun enough, it's, it's a fun little game it, it, it would be nice to have had more more stages and more variety in it but um it, it it's charming enough and, and it's a nice little it doesn't go overboard with the uh, crank stuff you only really use it to for a couple of things but um it's fun and then you get the final week week 12 and the first game in week 12 is 0360 which is another kind of breakout arcanoid thing but the whole thing is is based around this kind of rotating screen, um, similar to like the Tempest games, um, and so so basically you use your crank to to turn the bat around 360 degrees, which can be quite disconcerting at first. It, it, it takes a while to to get used to this one because there are times when you'll basically be you miss, you'll miss the blocks you're aiming for and you'll basically be hitting the ball to yourself because you hit it and then have to turn around and hit it back again so it's cool it, it, once you once you get the hang of the aiming um, it can actually be really quite satisfying but it's also it's also one of the harder it's one of the trickier games too to get used to the crank even by this point um, you'll have had the play date for like 11 weeks and you should be pretty much used to the crank by this point um, but it, it can still take a little while to get used to um, hitting a bat and ball around um, a stage like that. Uh, luckily, you've got kind of barriers to, to salvage uh, for temporarily if you, if you if you miss one shot. But yeah, it's it, it's a really cool twist on uh, a kind of overdone genre. Um, so it, it's quite a, a, one of two nice ways to, to round off the season. And then the final game is Ratcheteer, which is a kind of Zelda style, um, like old school Zelda um, type thing. is really similar to. Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, uh, where you play as, as a as a young chap. I don't want to spoil too much of the story, but I, I, over time he, he gains new items that he can use. And one of the early ones is a torch, which like kind of lantern thing, which lets him see ahead of him. Um, and you turn the crank to to power up the torch and and see um, further ahead. The, the the crank isn't always used a hell of a lot in this one, but it's a fun enough. Um, adventure anyway. It's got some kind of cool dungeons and, and stuff like that. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, neat little game and, and a nice way to round off uh, season one because there's, it's quite meaty. It's, it, whereas a lot of the previous games were almost kind of mini games in nature, um, it's nice to, to round things off with a, with, with a proper kind of uh, Zelda style game at the end. And that's it, that's all uh, 24 games and that you'll get with season one with the play date. Um, like I say, that's the order you should get them in, um, two at a time, two, two per week over the course of 12 weeks. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you do, please do the usual uh, like and subscribing that you do on YouTube. Um, and otherwise, please keep it on VGC for all of your gaming goodness. Thanks guys, bye bye.